Hello everybody, Tortoise Investing. Welcome to my channel. I do a lot of buy and hold forever videos. I do some research and I try to find things that are on sale at a good value, pays a good reliable dividend, and hopefully you can join me on this journey. 547 subscribers right now. Let's march on to 1,000, 10,000, 100,000. Let's grow our channel and our portfolios together. Now, without further ado, the stocks we're going to be taking a look at United Healthcare Group, ba -ba 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 -ba, Williams Sonoma, Canadian National Railroad, and CVS. United Health Group, just a cash flow yield of 8.11%. Very nice. Dividend yield of 1.37%. A payout ratio of 30.5%. Uh, this company has had a lot of ups and downs over the last year. It's, you know, it's all over the place. But if we take a look here at the five year, very reliable growth. I like this company long term. This is very good. This is just straight up to the right. Um, this is like one of the best healthcare uh, stocks in my eyes, personal opinion. No, this financial advice. But back in October, this thing's over five hundred and fifty dollars. It is now down to four ninety two. So I think it might be something you know, put on a watch list, do a little research on it, and see what you think about it. I uh, recently cracked over five hundred, five ten, and it's back down to four ninety two. So who knows? I, I've got my eyes on it. And I, I would like to have a little bit of exposure to the healthcare industry. And this would probably be the one. Revenue. Revenue has been increasing at a rate of 11.35% over the last 10 years. Free cash flow has been growing at 14.4% over the last 10 years. EPS, 14.9% over the last 10 years. They do have some debt. It's not a concern. $54.5 billion in debt. They got $29.8 in EBITDA. My rule of thumb, personally, I don't like companies that have three times more debt than their EBITDA. So this would be, if if this was over $60,000, uh, 60, $60 billion, no, $90 billion. It'd have to be $90 billion, just to give you an, an idea of uh, how insane it would need to be in order for it to be three times. If the debt was $90 billion, it would be over three times, and then it would be a concern. But right here, $54 billion, not a worry in my eyes. Again, that's just my personal preference. Uh, the dividend growing at a rate of 20.98% over the last 10 years. That's just ridiculousness. This literally looks like a stair step. That is called compounding. Uh, they don't really do share buybacks all that often. The company is usually pretty expensive and sells at a premium. And the return on capital employed is 17 to 18% for forever and a day. Next up, McDonald's. McDonald's got a free of just cash flow yield of 3.16%. Got a dividend yield 2.16% and a payout ratio of 54.7%. So again, not too bad. Uh, McDonald's was uh, flirting with the 300s there for a little bit, down to 280. I've got my eyes on this as well. Uh, I already hold Texas Roadhouse, but McDonald's going to be another great addition to my portfolio, I feel. Um, now, the revenue. Revenue has been kind of flattish over the last five years. Not really going up, not really going down. Uh, with this thing, though, you're getting a moat. You're getting a moat and a half. Everyone knows McDonald's. These things are everywhere. Uh, free cash flow. Free cash flow has been increased at a rate of 8.22% over the last five years, so not too bad. EPS. EPS slowly increasing. 5.51% over the last five years. And not, you can put a little trend line in here, up and to the right. Uh, their debt. They have $35.9 billion in debt. They have $9.74 billion in EBITDA. Not a concern there. It falls in line with my three-time rule. Let's take a look at the dividend. Dividend over the last 10 years increased at a rate of 7%. That is inflation beating. I like that. And as of late, it looks like they've been doing a little bit of a bigger hike. They did uh, The last one was over 10%. So, very nice. Shares outstanding. Uh, they are buying back some shares over the last 10 years at a rate of 3.14%. And over the last year at a rate of 1.4%. So, not too bad there as well. 
Uh, if you take out their 2020 hiccup, it has pretty much been above 20% for return on capital employed for forever. Uh, again, McDonald's, you're getting a moat, you're getting a very reliable dividend, a very safe dividend, and a company that is just flowing in cash. Like, this company knows how to make money and keep money. I like McDonald's. Next up, Williams Sonoma, free adjusted cash flow yield of 9.6%, uh, dividend yield 2.68%, and a payout ratio real low at 21.3%. Very nice. Uh, this one is off of its highs. Let's see here. Back in 2021, this thing was over $200 a share, and it is down to $125 now. I like William Sonoma. It's another strong company, I feel, in my eyes. Uh, the revenue revenue has been increasing at a rate of 7.93% over the last 10 years. Free adjusted cash flow. Cash flow has been increasing at a rate of 15.98% over the last 10 years. They've had some big spikes here as of late. And they are putting that to use. They are putting this cash to use. Uh, EPS, EPS is also spiking. You're going to see why. 20.44% uh, increase over the last 10 years. And they have no debt. Love that. No debt. Which means that dividend is not in any problem. Like, no worries whatsoever. And it's at 21%. So, like, again, it's not an issue as well. Uh, the dividend, dividend's been increasing at a rate of 11.25% over the last 10 years, and it has of late almost 16% over the last five. They've been doing even bigger hikes. And on top of all of that, they are buying back shares aggressively, almost 9.5% in the last year. Over the last 10 years, at a rate of 3.73%. And the return on capital employed... It's 32%, 50.9%, uh, 59.51%. Let's take a look at the quarterly here. Uh, they are still nibbling at shares uh, this January last year to now. They bought back, what is that, about 10 million additional shares. And as you can see from the last year, uh, it has been in their downturn. So they are not only buying back shares, they're buying back cheap shares. So they are putting that money to use. Love it. Next up, Canadian National Railway. This one and just Canadian Pacific in general, Like I like both these a lot. Uh, this one's more, it has more dividend yield than Canadian Pacific. Uh, Gang Pacific's got like a 0.7% dividend yield, where this one has a 2.11% dividend yield. So adjusted free cash flow yield of 6.11%. It's got a dividend yield of 2.11%. A payout ratio of 50.6%, so not too bad. Revenue's been increased at a rate of 5.6% over the last 10 years, so very nice. Good consistent growth. Free cash flow, 11.41%, up and to the right, very nice as well. EPS, again, over 9% growth over the last 10 years. And uh, when it comes to railroads, they will have more debt than usual. Uh, $14 billion in debt, their EBITDA is $9.6 billion, so even then, they're not an issue. Their debt's a lot more under control than what uh, Canadian Pacific's is. I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, the dividend. Dividend's been increasing at a rate of 11.17% over the last 10 years. Just up and to the right. Very nice. And the shares outstanding. Over the last 10 years, been buying back at a rate of 2.38%. Now, over the last year, 3.1%. So, let's take a look here at the quarterly. They have, they're still nibbling at shares every quarter. They are doing buybacks, and they are buying back cheap shares, I feel, which, you know, always want to be buying back cheap shares, and we'll be buying back those expensive ones. Um, they have a return on capital employed, 11.5% in 2020, 12.3% in 2021, 14.6% in 2022. So that is also growing. CNI, I like them a lot. Next up, CVS. It's been a controversial stock for the year because this one has been beaten to pieces, down 27.8% over the last one year, 33.7%. We take a look here at the five-year high. It does look like at one point they were around $110 a share, now down to $67.05. Just a free cash flow yield of 19.94%, dividend yield of 3.62%. 
payout ratio that does look higher than what it actually is so their payout ratio is a little bit high right now but you gotta look of the payout ratio here can be a little bit more deceiving uh, it's the same way if you look at Altria's payout ratio it's gonna say it's over 100% your payouts played from your free cash flow and if we take a look here at their free cash flow it's been increasing at a rate of 11.23% over the last 10 years up and to the right the dividend 10.4 percent over the last 10 years slowly but surely they did have a a big period here where they weren't increasing it but cvs i feel like they are going to be turning things around this is a sleeper stock in my eyes uh their return on capital employed low uh upper teen uh the upper single digits to 10.25 percent from last year and let's take a look here at the quarterly uh, again they had that dip back in december where they had a quarter of uh, negative uh, free cash flow i feel like that's a big reason for this drop if you take a look here ever since they reported that quarter it's just been a trip to the bottom last two quarters though positive free cash flow was that um right at 12 billion in free cash flow so yeah, they're on record. They're on par to uh, to definitely beat their free cash flow from last year, maybe even the year before that, if they keep this pace up. And if we take a look here at the shares, uh, 1.232 uh, billion, and then they had the dip happen, and they bought back some. I would like to see them buy back even more, especially since they're down so much, and they do have that free cash flow on the sidelines. But CVS, I like the company. I think it's just it's cheap, but there's also a risk when it comes to the healthcare sector. There's been a lot of news, a lot of negativity going around when it comes to pretty much anything healthcare. I mean, even United Health has been beaten up. It's had some ups and downs and all arounds. But again, do your own research before investing into anything. Don't just buy because I said that these are good stocks. I do feel that, honestly, all of these are pretty decent holdings. But do your own research. See if it fits in your own portfolio. Have a game plan. But yeah, five dividend stocks you can buy and hold forever. Hope you enjoyed that. As always, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button for more. And until next time, see you.